This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the best website for creating websites. More on that later. Recently, I've seen a lot of skateboarders bring back old skateboard shapes, kind of like this one. And I don't blame them at all. When I first saw the shape, I was like, I want to know how that feels. I want to know how a 10 inch board feels because I usually skate an 825. It's a big difference in skateboarding. The main goal today is to see if an old school shape can actually replace a popsicle shape of today because these have been optimized for modern street skateboarding but so many people love these. By the way, I am sponsored by Revive Skateboards. I just wanted to test out a 10 inch deck and Revive does not have those. But today I will actually show you my new Revive Pro models, which I'm unbelievably juiced for. And instead of testing at a skate park, I figured why don't we just take it to the streets by going to one of the most popular street spots in all of Texas. But unfortunately this happened. <laughs> It's completely gone. I tried to film it and this awkward thing happened. How you doing? They started conversing like literally right in front of the camera, but what happened to the angle iron at the spot? They built an entire rail on the angle iron, so now it is impossible, but what happened to the gap over here? They built this very bouncy, spiky fence, but you will die. Completely gone, but luckily right across the street, there is this perfect ledge and there's this whole kind of area to skate around. So 10 tricks on my normal skateboard and then we'll repeat the same 10 tricks with the old school shape to see the biggest differences. I did 10 tricks and the results are actually pretty shocking. So when it comes to ollies alone, like when I had an ollie over the tall barrier, this board was a little more strange because there is no nose, but I was surprised to see how high I could actually ollie without there being a nose on the board. I didn't know how non-essential noses were for ollies. I figured my foot would just slide right off and it was a little more difficult, but that just didn't happen at all. When it comes to the kick flip, the backside flip, even the tray flip, nothing felt different. Actually the tray flip and the switch tray flip I did faster on this skateboard. And I think maybe because there's a bigger tail and I don't know why. It was just it was, it was was just easier on this board even still. The biggest difference was obviously the nollie flip. There is no nose on this board. So expecting to do anything nollie is going to be ridiculous. So it kind of just ends up like this floppy weird nollie thing where your nose doesn't even touch the ground as opposed to a normal skateboard where it pops high. I will say with the fakey manual fakey flip, it was easier on my normal skateboard because normal skateboards are easier to actually flip around. Since this board is a little wider, maybe a little heavier, it feels like it takes more effort to get it to actually flip. But if you can do flip tricks solidly at all, it feels pretty similar. I think the biggest thing with this board is actually getting used to the trucks, which were a little wider, they're brand new, so I'm turning a little weird and loosey-goosey. But as for the skateboard itself, I mean, in the past when I've seen people skate boards like this, I'd be like, how do they do that trick on that board? That's so insane. But now I see why, it really doesn't make that big of a difference. So I feel like anyone out there who does want to try to get like a shaped deck, you can. I don't think it's gonna make a big hindrance on your process in skateboarding. I will stick to the popsicle shake because that's what I'm used to and you know anything else is just for fun so that's just what the cruiser board the shape board is for it's just for fun uh, and now I want some challenges for you know I'm gonna make some challenges before we get into the challenges that we're gonna do today a word from our sponsor Squarespace Squarespace reminds me of these clouds sky's the limit oh my god I regretted that joke as I was like saying the beginning of it but yes with Squarespace it's pretty much the same thing at least for me as important as any social media aspect for me it's a great place for any creative entrepreneur to start building their portfolio, or building their website, their store, their blog, pretty much anything you can possibly think of. They have award-winning templates, so you don't even have to try to get creative with design. You can just use the templates they already have, and it looks very professional. If you wanna do an email campaign, which goes to every single person that subscribes to it, there is no algorithm that determines if people are not gonna get things. A website is like the perfect place to start building your 
business. So if you're interested in things like that, if you're interested in expanding, doing your own clothing brand one day, expanding your social media in general, I believe that Squarespace is an amazing place for anyone to start. So if you want to sign up, you can go to squarespace.com right now and actually sign up just for free, test it out. But if you do want to like officially sign up, you can use my link in description down below, squarespace.com slash John Hill, and you'll get 10% off your first purchase or domain. So just click the link or just type in that web address, whatever. I use it all the time, pretty much every single day. So thank you so much for watching this. Thank you, Squarespace. And uh, yeah, enjoy the four challenges. I ended up trying several different challenges, including a blunt slide, but that didn't go well. Oh my God. So two challenges, the fakie crook and the back tail shove and then other stuff, you'll see. First thing I wanna try is a fakie switch crook with the cruiser board, which is tough because it's a pretty tall ledge. That is tall for like this. We got up there, not in the crook, but we got onto the ledge, which is hard enough. Ah, that's what I was afraid of. We got the fakie tail slide. Let's see if we can do the switch crooked grind. One thing that I think is worth mentioning is setting up the board, which I did the night before. It was cool. It came with a 10 inch sheet of grip tape. It was the widest grip I've ever gripped. And it was also super easy to cut. So all the extra weird dimensions on the sides and stuff didn't have any effect, but yeah, it was a, uh... It was a neat process and I even considered putting riser pads on it, but you know what? I wanted it to feel like a normal skateboard with just a different shaped deck. So it didn't turn into a cruiser. It's just a skateboard. Probably should have waited a few more days until I'm like more healed, but my lower back is kind of hurting now and my hip of course, but there is one more spot right over here that I think would be fun to at least tinker on before the end of this video because you know, I want to skate. I miss skating, but I do need rest days too. And today probably should have been a rest day. I feel like that would be a good place to end because I'm really stoked on how that turned out. Uh, I want to try hippie jump tricks. I feel like I'm always scared to jump over chains, but it's on the ground. So, you know, worst case scenario, I just hit the ground hard, but I think we're good. Every season I get a new pro model and I've been pro for like three years now-ish or so. So they're starting to stack up and I'm really excited to see these. I've seen pictures of them, but never in person. So let's start going through all the new pro models that they sent over. This is always like a fun experience because it's kind of like the payoff for skating for so long. They always send stupid stuff like this letter that says, Dear John, Happy Valentine's Day, Love Revive. It's actually not stupid at all. That's that's pure beauty. Thank you so much. I love you guys. Five Revive shirts. And I actually, I, I've been wearing Revive shirts a lot more often now. They're, they're wonderful. I should probably get a larger size, extra large. That one looks kind of familiar. A fan of Navy always and the tie dye on Navy. Nice touch. Classic Revive Red. If you don't know the guy who owns Revive, Andy Schrock, uh, he's only been wearing red shirts since he was like 15 years old. And he's like, 
34 something, 35. Crazy. Revive cat NFT. No, I'm just <laughs> Don't they look like they could be NFTs? Anyway, they're just cats. You know, just regular old art. You know, that doesn't make millions of dollars. Just normal art. The shirts are so soft and high quality. I know it sounds like I'm just pitching them, but they, I, you know, I love Revive shirts. I love the crew. That's why I'm on the team because I love everything about what they do. But Super Revive 64. That's cute. Deck number one, Yeti. Oh, that's, okay, so this is like a classic logo design. They've done this one several times, but never this color palette. I'm a big fan of like white backdrops because it looks like paper. I like to draw and it's a dark purple, which is a new nice touch. Deck number two, Revive. That looks like a hot dog. Dude, I'm vegan. It's a hot dog. It says Revive. Hot dogs are delicious when they're, when they're vegan and made out of probably just as weird of stuff as regular hot dogs. A board to match the shirt to Super Revive 64. All the faces of Brian Ames, who looks exactly like another famous Nintendo character. And I'm assuming that the last two decks are probably my pro model. Yeah! Okay, so this one, this one says John Hill 64. Uh, it looks like something. Um, there's a whole series of these decks that are kind of just like the game cartridges. So every pro model on the team, it's me, Johnny Geiger, Aaron Cairo, Jason Park, Sam Vestal. Just realizing now how like cool it is to be teammates with some of the best, coolest, most influential people in skateboarding. But we all have like a pro model deck, so it's a series. You can look at them. You know, you don't have to buy every single deck. One deck is good enough uh, if you want one to go skateboarding. But the shredquarters.com, that's where I skate all my stuff. And you know, it's the stuff I've been skating for years and I love it. And uh, it's really cool that I get to work with such cool people in skateboarding, especially people who have done something different that I have always wished skateboarding would provide. And now I'm pro for the team. So it's always an amazing feeling. <laughs> I have no idea what this is. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Hopefully in the next one, every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, I will be doing uh, a lot better skateboarding because I have been really excited recently of trying to learn new tricks, doing new things, also no, new parkour, maybe adding some of my art elements into the videos to come. So I'm really, really stoked. But of course, I need to be at least at normal potential. My body needs to be like decent to actually progress in skateboarding. So today was kind of just skating in the heat of being hurt. So next time it will be much better. Promise your face that. Thank you so much. So much take care progress daily and keep killing it <laughs>